This is a body of work that began a little over a year ago, and the work began out of, uh, actually out of my mother passing, and my desire to create a connection with her in the next world and whatever that might be. Out of that desire, I created a new studio practice. And she used to always say to me, Karina, just do what you love. Do what you love to do. And oftentimes I found as an artist, I was creating, I was working with my hands, I was making a living as an artist, but I wasn't always doing what I loved to do. And at a certain point last winter, I began painting. And there was something about working with the fluid materials of paint and allowing the material sometimes to tell me what to do, that I felt like I connected with doing what I love to do. Not that I was abandoning metalwork, I just needed to take a little break from it and needed to work with soft materials. My mother passed, she had cancer for about five, going on six years really. So inside of that space of health, I started to look up on the internet, what do cancer cells look like? And they were these sort of round, shapes that were sort of oblong and they morphed together and grew. And there was something inside of that research where I wanted to make peace with what it was in a sense that took my mother's life. When I started doing the images of the cells, I then started expanding further. So I had this one little painting, and then I started to just draw the cells. And there was something about drawing these circles for me that gave me a space to have memories of backpacking trips and gardening and flights across the ocean and snorkeling together and horseback riding and just things that we did over time. Then I had this idea that flashed into my mind, which was, the last thing that my mother said before she passed on the full moon that was the super moon was she said, I'm sending this prayer to you from the moon. And she lived in Taos, New Mexico and she looked out over the San Gre de Cristo mountains in her backyard and the last thing she asked her friends to do was to bring her outside to her couch in the gazebo to watch the sunset, which is something she loved to do. And as she lay there, she just said this line, I'm sending this prayer to you from the moon. And then she closed her eyes and went to sleep. And there was something about that message that resonated with me. And I started turning the cells into moons. The images started to formulate into moons and collect or coagulate. And then I made one out of metal. I thought, why don't I try this as a sculpture? It's interesting because there are a few pieces that do combine both the sculpture and the painting. Some pieces are just the paintings, but even like when we look at this piece, for instance, and you see the shapes going across, those are sort of the cloak or they're the veil. And then they're also like an abacus. So inside of the abacus, it's also uh, a counting tool. It's also like drawing the circles, the meditation of drawing the circles and the cells. So they're connected in many ways. And the final piece that I completed, there are 68 circles, and they're steel and wood and paint. And I think of those as sort of portals into the cosmos, a glimpse into the universe. And with each piece, it's another space and another meditation, another mystery. I feel like I, I caught a certain stride I have a critique group as well that I've worked with for the last year and one of them kept saying, Karina, you paint and you sculpt, when will you combine the painting and the sculpture? So there are three pieces in the exhibition that I effectively have combined the painting and the sculpture. So there are two pieces that are metal sculptures only and there are a variety of pieces that are just paintings. So when I envision the viewer being with the work, there's a few words that come to mind and one is transcendence, another is meditation, sort of transformation. So for the viewer, I leave a little space of ambiguity. So there's a doorway for the viewer. There's a space they can come in. So inside that space of leaving ambiguity, it's very much about what does the viewer bring themselves to the space, to the environment. Now, not that every single piece is about death per se, but more about the life and more about what's next. so much has grown out of creating the work. 
in that space of meditation or healing or motivation to just be happy, to live my life. You know, both of my parents passed very early and I started to ask myself, am I fulfilling on what my full potential in life is? Am I complaining about what's not happening or what is it to really go for what my dreams are, to realign with who I see myself as an artist and what type of legacy could I leave behind for the people that will come after me? How will I be remembered? Will I make a difference in people's lives at all? So one of my dreams has always been to have our history books open up and there's a space that I'm remembered inside of the contribution as an artist. I created that this exhibition was like a turning point in my life as an artist. That I've worked at what I do and I work at it very hard, but I've never worked at what I do as an artist in such a focused way, in such a cohesive one thought that leads to the next thought that leads to the next thought for a full year. And so there's something very magical about this moment of sharing this work with people that I see it as a turning point in myself and I see it as a turning point in my recommitment to who I am as an artist and who I am as a legacy and, and who do I get to be that I get to share, that I get to inspire, that I get to challenge myself, that I get to challenge others to step out and be be who you are in your dreams while you're alive. And that's the biggest message that I got from both of my parents and my younger brother passing at early ages was just to look and see what are some of my dreams and what are ones that I've fulfilled and what do I still have left to accomplish. And so I feel like this is some of the first steps in those milestones.